My name is Justus Uche Ijama. I'm a human rights defender. I'm a lawyer. I'm from Nigeria. I live and work in Anambra State, uh, Southeast Nigeria. <laughs> Well, the the story of uh, what the human rights situation is in Nigeria is one uh, story I don't like to tell. Uh, not uh, because uh, there is anything to hide, but because it's a story that elicits, you know, pain and uh, sad feelings in me. It's rather unfortunate that. Uh, a country like Nigeria with all its potential, you know, has remained, you know, on its knees like a demobilized giant, uh, largely due to our lack of respect for human rights. Uh, the human rights records, you know, of Nigeria is evident, you know, on daily occurrences uh, that happen in Nigeria which do not, you know, uh, paint a very good image. The, 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 all the major fundamental, you know, rights that inure to every human being are being almost being observed in breach on daily basis. The, 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 most, the most important right that accrues to human being is right to life. Today, the, the, the right to life of people are being uh, abused with terrible impunity, both by uh, government agencies and non-state actors. There, is issue, there are issues of uh, extrajudicial killings. There are issues of enforced disappearances. There are issues of, you know, uh, killings by a herdsman, uh, there are issues of killings by Boko Haram, and these are when we talk about killings, we're talking about killings of human beings, and that is the greatest violation of human rights. Whenever a man is killed outside the law, whenever a, a, a human being's you know life is taken away without the due process of law it constitutes a, a, a grave human rights violation. So the, the human rights record uh, of Nigeria is uh, uh, something, uh, it's not something to write home about. It's something that uh, elicits the feeling of pain in me that at this stage, we are still talking about the, the basic things that we should have, you know, passed, uh, long past, you know, that we are still uh, uh, locked in such situations and we are not making any progress. Uh, currently, I work with the uh, International Human Rights and Equity Defense Foundation, uh, IREF for short, uh, which uh, I am the executive director. Our major uh, area of specialization is uh, access to justice. Uh, we also work on issues of public accountability with special focus on uh, police violence, uh, police brutality. Uh, we also work on issues of uh, torture and extrajudicial killings, uh, enforced disappearances, unlawful arrests, uh, prolonged detention without trial. These are uh, you know, very issue, issues that occur very often in the, my country and we help to make sure that we address them, you know, whenever the I I issue arises. My role in the organization includes uh, coordinating the daily activities of the organization and I'm also involved in uh, uh, on the spot intervention for uh, people who are victims of human rights who uh, seek for our uh, services. I, as a lawyer, I also engage in, 
you know, uh, providing access to justice, which is one of the core uh, areas, you know, thematic areas of, you know, our undertaking uh, in the organization. Uh, I think that's my role. That's my role in the organization. Uh, I, I wouldn't really know why it is so possible and so easy for such wired things to be happening uh, in our jurisdiction. It really uh, beats my imagination. Quite uh, honestly, there is or there are bodies that ought to put the police uh, in check. There are, you know, there is at least I know an oversight body, uh, civilian body that should provide, you know, uh, oversight on the police, the police service commission. But it does appear from experience that this body, you know, has been demobilized. Maybe because of the, the crop of, you know, uh, uh, leadership that ha have managed the body in the last, you know, uh, 10 to 15 years. The situation is such that the government, the, presi the president, who has the, re the responsibility, the statutory, you know, right to appoint the chairman of that commission, would always appoint uh, a retired senior police officer to head a civilian body that provides oversight on the police activities. The, that is, for me, that is not very healthy because the, the, the spirit of esprit de corps still run, you know, in their midst. How can you be nominating police officers that just left the service a while ago to head such a critical institution that should provide oversight on the police. So I think these are some of the problems. The, 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 the handling of the affairs, I think, is fraught with a lot of, you know, politicking. And whenever you allow uh, political considerations to, you know, weigh above, you know, uh, objectivity, particularly in critical issues like policing, it quite naturally would degenerate into the kind of situation we have on ground in back home in Nigeria. I believe that governance is different from politics. Politics should stop after the elections and governance should begin, begin at you know, inauguration. What, what made me be, uh, become a human rights uh, defender? I think uh, becoming a human rights defender is more of a, a natural thing for me, because I strongly believe that uh, being a human rights defender is not what you uh, uh, push someone into. It's naturally an innate thing for me. I hate, you know, the sight of injustice anywhere, and I don't let uh, injustice to pass without raising a whimper, without raising my voice of objection to it, no matter how feeble, no matter how weak, no matter, you know, uh, how subdued, but I don't let injustice pass. Uh, after school, I went into business at first, then, my human rights work, you know, got burnished uh, better when I eventually uh, got, you know, uh, involved in the civil liberties organization in Nigeria, which uh, at the time was the leading uh, human rights group in the whole of Nigeria, particularly during the military era. Uh, I was the state secretary of that CLO, Civil Liberties Organization, in Anambra State, where I live and work. Then later on, I became uh, the legal uh, secretary of the organization. 
and that was how I started my human rights work. Eventually, uh, at some point, I was already a human rights activist before I, you know, actually uh, went back to school to study law and eventually became a lawyer in my quest to strengthen, you know, uh, capacity to be able to deliver uh, services, you know, uh, human rights related services to my constituency, you know, and that's the story. That's how I became a human rights activist. The effect on my personal uh, life, my family, I would say one thing is that whenever you, are, you set out to uh, hold any view or to undertake on any course of action, really your, your, your work uh, offends some people and your work supports the position of some people and quite naturally when the people that your opinion are against will, may not take it you know kindly with you so that is one of the what i consider as the hazard of the work we do the the work i do affects my life in that uh uh, like I told you earlier on, I have uh, at some points been ha been beaten up, been attacked physically, I've been detained, you know, I have been harassed, intimidated, you know, by people that should protect me. But because they are beneficiaries of illegality and my work tends to conflict with their rather uh, ill interest i i have been marked down as an enemy that should be dealt you know with decisively so it, to that extent the work affects my personal life yeah i wouldn't say that there has been any attempt to my knowledge uh on my family but you 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 never can rule out any possibility because the our trade users, you know, are capable of doing anything, but we are not, you know, to be deterred. We are not. Uh, personally, I have resolved. Uh, <laughs> whatever any man does, cannot cow me. Cannot deter me from, you know, continuing in my, you know, uh, undertaking. Because I know that any society that lacks conscientious objectors is dead. And therefore, there is no need to, you know, uh, take a cover under the table because another person is harassing you. It should be the person that is doing what is not right that should be afraid of you and not the other way around. And not me that I know what I'm doing is just, is lawful, is for the interest of the public. It's not me that should be afraid. It is he that is doing, you know, unlawful things that should be afraid. Well, there are uh, a lot of uh, challenges we face. I think uh, from those uh, challenges, uh, you could decipher what you could do to support. Uh, one of the challenges we face is uh, the challenge of uh, lack of resources to be able to continue uh, what we are doing. There is also an uh, issue of low awareness on issues of right on the part of the civil populace back home, which uh, requires to be uh, shored up uh, in a very serious uh, uh, rate to help conscientize our people on issues of rights and that this will entail uh, carrying out some uh, social uh, enlightening programs like uh, radio programs, television uh, programs, uh, carrying out workshops and training, you know, on, on 
a wide range of human rights issues to help conscientize the people as to what are their rights and how to go about it where in case anybody you know is threatening their rights or has violated their rights or intends to violate their rights but these are some of the challenges some of the difficulties we have we also have the issues of you know a harassment brutality from the authorities like i've mentioned earlier you know and it's up to our viewers to figure out how to you know uh, uh, uh contribute to ensure that we are, what we are doing to help uh other people back home you know is really supported human rights respect for human rights is the basis for freedom is the basis for peace there cannot be peace where there is oppression and injustice and if we actually uh, want peace in our society if we actually want sustained development we must you know learn to respect uh, other people's rights we must make it a duty to ensure we, that we uphold the tenets of human rights <laughs>